All right, we're good. Ready? All right, here we go. Three, two, one. And Bebo! Ladies and gentlemen, we are Lonely Boxing and Bebo Podcast with Manny Marrero. Sean El Gringo Hicks. Hopper. Breaking it down like it is, like it should be. Bottle boxing. Those of you that are seated at the moment in your front porch, in your garage, you're about to go to sleep and you're listening to our podcast. Drinking a cold one. Drinking mm. a cold one. You're living hey, the life. Smoking a fatty. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> the good old can. That's not your porch, Hopper. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey! <laughs> <I'm Bill. laughs> but um, thank you for listening. For those of you that are looking for us, you find them in every platform. You can upload your favorite podcast, Los Tri Amigos en Vivo, Long Live Boxing. A lot to talk about. So much boxing. A lot of excitement, but at times, sad things happen in, in the world boxing, Hopper. Yes, it's unfortunate. Um, life comes at you fast. You know, you're here one day, and you're gone the next. You just never know. It's fine. Yeah. You uh, appreciate your your loved ones. Um, tell them you love them. Don't hold grudges. Apologize. Um, and we before we begin, we want to take this time to uh, honor uh, Travel Mazion, aka Black Magic. Black Magic. Black and Magic. Uh, Mr. Dicky Cole, who Gringo wrote a fantastic article on. That's um, right. Yeah. Gringo, you want to touch on the article? Yeah, um, uh, makes six years ago now that uh, I had wrote for another, um, you know, site that I was a part of with with Hopper, uh, True True Boxing Heads. Uh, shout out to them, Nacho, and uh, I was just writing out my ass like I normally do, and uh, <laughs> I, I did do my research, I did verify information, um, and I, I wrote a story. It was called um, "Who Is Greg Alvarez?" Greg Alvarez now is the uh, Texas Boxing Commission, the TDLRC, and uh, TDLLR, and um, he was going to be the predecessor to, you know, Dickie Cole. And, and basically in the article, I didn't think there was anything that I wrote that wasn't known, you know, that he was, you know, uh, Dickie Cole um, was, you know, challenging, difficult to deal with, you know, demanding and, you know, a, a strong-willed person. But, you know, anytime you're a leader, especially a, a great leader and, and one that has a lot of responsibility, you have to do things to make things happen sometimes. And, you know, sometimes you got to be mm-hmm. rough and uh, mm-hmm. people aren't always going to like Mr. it. Mr. Unpopular. You got you, you yeah. to be uh, firm. Yeah. But you got to be fair. And it's I not a popularity contest. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's, it's definitely not a popularity contest. And, and then we all know in the sport of boxing that, you know, people are quick to, to blame. And, and, you know, and honestly, they're, they're not always happy. You know, and also, too, under his watch because he was under, you know, over the um, – you know, 21 years from 1993 to 2014, he was ahead of the combative sports of Texas Depart licensing and regulation. So uh, TDLR that I just spoke of. Anyway, long story short, um, or long story longer, uh, I wrote the <laughs> article and uh, I got a real weird call. And that's the thing. I usually don't answer the phone. So never answers my call. Yeah. It, sorry. Yeah. You guys had to find out. Maybe that way. a text. <laughs> Maybe. But uh, yeah, I actually that's answered it. Off. And uh, it was uh, somebody that was speaking on behalf. They were asking me if I, I knew who Dickie Cole was. And I was like, well, yeah. And uh, they said, well, hey, you wrote an article about him. And, you know, he's he's not happy about it. And he wants to talk to you about it. So anyway, we hooked. We uh, we scheduled a time where we could talk again. And, uh, you know, I I was concerned because it took a long while for us to to meet up and i was like man this guy's working on a speech to <laughs> let me have out. it yeah but <laughs> never allowed in a box yeah it, it was it was nothing like that of the sort i mean he was actually very you know accommodating he was very hospitable very respectful and he really wanted to hear you know um about my experience and my passion for boxing and you know he said you know hey i i do feel you know um you know, we could help each other out. You know, why don't I tell you, you know, about the real story instead of what people are telling you, you can hear directly from me. So mm, um, from boom. there, you know, he, we, uh, we worked on it for, for weeks at a time. Cause I remember that we were supposed to, I kept telling, uh, uh, not sure the guy I was doing the article for that I was going to get it to him, but it went from a, like a quick piece to something that was, you know, you know, obviously a lot more drawn out. So, um, yeah, it was, <clears throat> it, it was, a, a great eye-opening experience for me because I learned so much. And honestly, within the conversation that we had, he explained his mindset. Basically, he he said he believes in, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, we hear, 
Mr. Jerry Jones of the Dallas Cowboys believe as long as they're talking about you, you know, that's a good thing. So he didn't mind being the villain. You know, he, he actually, in a sense, kind of embraced it because – he said, you know, boxing does have a lot of things that aren't so good, mm-hmm. that are corrupt. But he said, you know, at the end of the day, I do want to help people, young people, and give them opportunity. And he did. I mean, men, women of all race, creeds, and colors, uh, he gave them great opportunities and jobs. And, um, you know, they're forever grateful. And, you know, I was mm-hmm. grateful to have a time to meet with him. So it was an honor. That's a fantastic story, Gringo. Great story. Saturday. Saturday. Rest in peace, Travel. Rest in peace, Mr. Dickie Cole, Travel, gone too soon. Uh, look down on us. Indeed. Yeah, boxing, much love. Boxing ring in the sky. Indeed. Re- real quick, before we go and, uh, you know, get into this whole boxing thing, I, I did want to share this one story of to kind of get you guys a different perspective of how Dickie Cole was, Uncle Dickie Cole. Um, I told him one time when we were over breakfast, because he had me over to breakfast when we talked about the story and how he wanted the article to be written out. And I told him how one of my friends, uh, shout out to uh, uh, Jevin Snyder, how he dared me at one of the fights one time. I was sitting there at the front. He said, hey, man, if you, I give you $100 if you yell right now and, uh, you know, you call Dickie Cole the devil. You know, so I, I, called, I told Dickie Cole this story, and, you know, he just kind of laughed. He looked me dead in the eye and said, I would have kicked your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, would have put a whooping yeah, on you. Wow. Be my ass. And yeah. he probably would have. He so. probably would have. <laughs> wow. And you would have been telling a whole different yeah. story. If you oh, man. Say. Yeah, I, I probably wouldn't be here. You know, so. <laughs> and then after um, that, let's go to a buffet. <laughs> <laughs> let's settle things with food. So, RIP. <laughs> Love you. Big uh, time. Big time. Great story. So <laughs> brave. So to inspiring. boxing. Back man. to boxing. There's the a great, bubble top ranks. There's a great card that was Easy. on on uh, the 21st. Headlined that by. That was right. Oscar Valdez, Jason Velez, Mexico, Sa- Puerto Sa- Rico. Sa- Rico. Man, Sa- Sa- score enough, one for the Mexicans, <laughs> huh, Manny? Sadly enough, it uh, was the last <laughs> of the series of the bubble for the summer. Uh, I miss it already. I, I, I sure do, too. I mean, it's Thursday. We're here. We could have had it right there on the TV. But. Yeah. I mean, you talk about living in denial. I remember saying, like, man, that's going to be so great. We're going to be in the studio. We can watch the yeah. the Thursday card. Yeah. And but great uh, main event um, yesterday. Um, great Oscar Valdez. Had an honor to see him one time fighting. Um, he's great. Um, person. You know, he he has that, you know, potential to be a, you know, a super champion. Um, and he, he proved it. Um, I felt he was slightly behind on my card. Not surprised. Um, oh, not man. Surprised. Man, not his surprised card was on what a sliding did you see, scale. Did you see Moretti? I think Manny's cards at one point was six M- rounds Moretti to had five. Oh, Moretti <laughs> had it 5-4. Did he? For who? Yeah. For, uh, for Velas. For Velas? Yeah, 84-85. Oh, wow. Well, that should tell you something. 85-84. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the goat's still you there. You really want Moretti on your side? But, um, I, you know, it was it was just a lot of very close rounds that um, I think that Jason Velas, you know, yeah, did, no, he, did some work to, did. to get them in. A, now, if, if I believe that if if he would have not knocked them out in the last round, definitely Velas would have been, been close. The edge. It would have been close. It would have been close. But I think that they were going to give, you know, Velas, I mean, um, you know, Val, Valdez to fight because, yeah, you know, he's, Birch, he just yeah, came yeah. In, he, he finished strong. Setting up Bircha, too. You know, but um, the reality is, is he came through. He, you know, threw that punch that he was trying to accommodate through the, through the whole night. And mm-hmm. Velas did a really good job, you know, kind of blocking. Um, and unfortunately, he just got, he just got, <sighs> got hit real hard. Yeah. But, and the thing I took from this fight was, I'll be honest, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge Valdez fan, you know, Rivala Raza, you see the Mexican flag behind Yo, me. Mexico! It's but iron, too, guys. It's iron this time. Sorry, it was wrinkled last time. <laughs> you got a lot of death threats last time. Yeah, I did. I yeah. got a lot of heat for it. As right, soon as right. I got home, especially Enjoy from, it. from the law, my wife. But anyways, <laughs> Oscar Valdez, he, uh, I'm not sure where his offense went. It's not like the typical Oscar Valdez that we come to come to see, come to find out. Is that the new Valdez this is the, style? The, the new Ray, Eddie Reynoso the new Valdez, and new and improved. I guess he's trying to make him box like Canelo, but 
He's not Canelo. He's mm. Valdez is uh he, he he's already going to be giving up the the height in almost right. a lot of fights because he's a short fighter. He's right. a very short fighter, and, and then he crouches down. He crouches down, makes it even shorter, and he's uh, it take it takes him a really hard time to get inside, and he he definitely eats punches to get in the inside. But we're accustomed to seeing Valdez just go go at it, you know, hunt hunt the opponent down, and we didn't get that from him. He was he looked timid. He looked confused. He didn't know whether he wanted a box or he wanted a brawl. Um, he wasn't. He, he just looked out of it. Yeah, but um, Velas did a good job. Velas did a good job taking him. Yeah, he Velas was Velas was. And I have to tall. shout out for Velas because he gave us a lot. I mean, if you ask me, I you got to be realistic. You know, before the fight, I knew it was going to be a very tough one. There was always an opportunity, but you know, we knew that superiority of. Uh, Valdez. You know, Valdez. Yeah, but he definitely gave us a lot of excitement. Um, I'm I'm pretty excited. That um, you know, he came. He he was very short, and that does give him an opportunity to kind of come back. He is a veteran, but yeah. hopefully he will. I mean, thank you, Bellis. You, uh, yeah, and did it a was, great job. It was only a two inch height difference on paper, but it seemed much Man, longer it seemed than that. A yeah. lot Bellis more. Just, did. Uh, yeah, I guess because the way the way Valdez likes to crouch down and uh, set up his punches and. He, he throws his whole body on him. He throws yeah, his whole, whole he twerks yeah. his whole body. Like and so get, in the, the uh what I was gonna say for me, uh things that stood out as far as just for the fight, as far as I really felt like that what I saw changed as far as the the reluctancy. And I don't know if that was just trying to adjust the timing because he maybe hadn't got enough sparring in mm-hmm. for Valdez. He was really I know he he's always gonna be an offensive fighter. But it seemed like he was almost trying to set traps up for uh, Velez. Yeah. And uh, he kept trying to, you know, kind of wait, kind of peekaboo, and then come back and come over the top with that, that left that hook. That left hook that was. Which it was. When it, when, smart. Yeah. When it landed, it was, it was, it was great. In the fifth round, it landed. dropped him. Yeah. And that's, I think, when it kind of changed the, the fight. The but which fight, is kind of yeah. weird, though, from the Velez standpoint, because I was thinking, man, you're doing such a great job on the outside boxing. All right. So um, if it was a trap, he he got he sucked in and it worked, you know. Yeah. So you know, props to him. It was just like you said. It was just kind of um. Maybe that was the game plan. Well, right? maybe I, that I, was the Reynoso game plan. It's Beta Man. It's Beta Man. Well, I, and then hit him with the left hook. Yeah, because he didn't feel he didn't feel Velez's power. No, he didn't. But you have to take in consideration that I think Velez got too excited and said, "Let me take some more. Let me let me try to squeeze in some things." And you can you hear his trainer saying, "Asi no, asi no, no le meta." You know, don't don't go into the inside. Go Why inside. would you have to go yeah, inside? Why? Inside fight. Just keep on keep, on keep that double jab. It keep him on the over. outside. It was, was over. It was over. So you know, I I think it was you know, it was a veteran mistake. I I mean, should know better, but um, you can't take anything away from Valdez. No, no, not not no. at all. Um. One thing that I also say too, and you know, again, not being that guy, half man, half mm, disappointment. Here he comes. Yeah, but hear me out, see. because here, Velez here, had. Um, did you guys notice that on the CompuBox, and maybe they have a new computer? Uh, Dave Moretti must be in charge of the programming. <laughs> but they said he threw five hundred and sixty-six punches, and he only landed sixty-four. Oh, Velez? Yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah. saw he was. Uh, I saw early on. I remember, I remember hearing one of the commentators saying he had maybe. Like a fifteen percent connect, twelve percent, fifteen percent, twelve percent. At the end, dropped all the way down to twelve. Yeah, because yeah, at the wow. end, you know, obviously he didn't, you know, really land yeah. anything. But um, his work weight, I thought, was good. You know, no, and yeah. I, I think he stole a lot of rounds. I mean, I had what uh, Steve uh, Weisfeld, he had it eighty eight, eighty one. 88-81. Valdez, which I find it ridiculous, <laughs> and to be honest, that donkey? should be the donkey of Is the week. Is that the donkey of the week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, serious. Um, yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah I didn't see nah. that either. It was a close fight. Yeah. Um, I, I don't either. Velez, I think Velez made it uh, made it very competitive, it and uh, it's very surprising. I will say about that, Valdez Valdez for the main event uh, left a lot to be desired. But as they say in boxing, win today, look good look on good the next, next one. one. So speaking, can, of, can, speaking of next speaking of next one, one can, next he, one. can he definitely? It sets up. It sets can he up definitely a, some beat. juicy nuggets with some sweet oh, sauce? Extra crispy. I, can he actually beat El Alacran? Mm, 38 and question. 1. Alacran, mm. Miguel Berchet, long reigning, 130 pound titleist from Merida, Mexico. Viva Mexico! What are you going to do there? I mean, mm. uh, oh, it's a win win situation oh, no. for me. I mean, <laughs> I'm a winner already. <laughs> I, I, I've already won in that. Ho- Hopper's got that one on lock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Check. It sets up a 
mouth-watering matchup. Yeah. But uh, Oscar Valdez is going to have to uh, step it up and do something totally different because getting punched, uh, not, no, not taking away anything from, from Vélez, but getting punched by Burchett with yeah. the same the same way that Vélez was landing. Yep. That, uh, that Pikachu trap is not going to work. That Pikachu trap is not going to work on Alacran. Alacran is going to get him. He's more accurate up. with the punches. <laughs> more and power. Can fight inside. And if you want to yeah. go toe-to-toe in the He'll, inside. He's ready. He is ready. There's a reason he's 38-1 and one with 34 knockouts. I, Miguel Alacran Burchett. I mean, um, just maybe I'm overstating here. And, you know, keep me in my lane, Hopper. Manny, keep me honest. I'll go ahead and say to me, I look at Alaklan Burchett as one of the best offensive fighters right now going. Him Offensively. Maybe Va- Vaquero Navarrete as well because he has no regard for. Yeah, he's uh, got no regard. And, and there's another young man who might be the the uh, offensive fighter who was the co-main event of that fight. And we'll touch on him in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Get Edgar Berlanga, the yeah. chosen one. Berlanga. So, But I would definitely rank Miguel Burchett up there with the best as far as uh, uh, exciting fe- uh, fighters that uh, – that go toe to toe, toe to toe, start to end. Because like his punches, like it's almost like they're explosive. Mm. You know, like when he's throwing his combinations, you know, like he overwhelms his opponents. He's he's the prototypical Mexican uh, mm. a- aggressive pressure fighter who's gonna come at you, uh, and he will find you. It's the ring. He's, yeah, he's gonna find you. I mean, I I, I love him. I mean, My, I I I think he's phenomenal. I know a lot of people are, you know. Weren't impressed with him with the last performance that he had. Yeah. But, you know, we, yeah. we can guys. We well, can he cut. took two, he took a lot of punches, and that's the problem about Berchelt. And 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 I mean, he he demonstrated that he can come back to it, but I don't know how long he's got a career if he continues to just take you know some of those hard punches and just brawling and going toe to toe with with their opponents. No, exactly. But see, the thing for me though is like if there's a guy that can beat him, I don't think. Valdez is that guy. Though. It's you not. don't think Valdez is the guy to beat no, Burchett? No, no. I think I think out of everybody that that Burchett has faced, uh, I think well Valdez is going to be by far the the most accomplished. Uh, he did face at Bandido Vargas, Takashi Miura, Miguel Roman. Miguel Roman. Uh, that was a tough fight. Francisco fired. Vargas. He got him twice actually. Ground, but, uh, Jason he, Sosa. He got in trouble. He. Uh, what no, version would you like to see of Valdez though? The, for that to happen. The one that, uh, not the one that got his jaw broken either, because <laughs> I don't want to see that version of Valdez. Oh, but yeah. Maybe that's why he was fighting so timid as well. No, you know? he, he said that's, that. That's part, maybe that yeah. goes into a box. He fought like mentality. seven rounds with a broken jaw. He fought mm. against Scott Quigg, I believe it was. Right, Scott against Quigg, and then yeah. Lopez, he got dropped. And then Lopez dropped him the next fight. And so maybe he's gun thinking, shy? I don't want, yeah, I think that's what it is. He's, uh, doesn't want to no. doesn't want to have his job broken. He did. Doesn't want to get his job. If yeah. you're gun shy, yeah. <laughs> but no. I, I don't think it was his night at all. No. I don't know. I mean, we talked about with Orlando Gonzalez and the pressure that you have around you. How how you know how you scary you are about this whole COVID stuff and uh, you know the the new protocols and all that. That had to take effect as well. Because honestly, he even did you see when he finished the fight. I don't know exactly what they were told, and it's like, yeah, I know, I know, it's not a good one. No, he knows. Okay. They you know. know. And it's, the and it's okay. Know. I won. I got it. It's out of my system. But I, I think this is a huge. If you ask me, it's got to be a huge wake up call because you ain't going with, a, you know, just a weak opponent in Brazil. No, you're going with the WBC you could be, Bell champion. It could you be. I mean, be. again, I got to stay in my lane. I know we're in episode 49, building to that big crescendo for episode 50. Twenty. Hi. Damn. Bebo. It could be a career ender, man. Like he could be destroyed. Yeah, I think I could see that. I just, I mean, it's. Well, it's you, I could see it. I, I could say, see it. Uh, maybe not career under, but in terms of uh, being a contender, being a champion. Yes, but that's it, what it, I mean. Would it be too much? Because this is his second fight in the super featherweight, and he showed with Lopez that he's vulnerable, mm-hmm. and if he gets hit the right way. He's gonna go down. Yeah, if he couldn't handle the, if he couldn't uh, defend the overhand rights from Velez, those same overhand exactly. rights are gonna be coming from. Berger. And they are going to be more faster, powerful. more powerful. Yeah, and they're gonna I, be uh, a lot more compact. Do you think it was a wake up call for Eddie Reynoso too? Like, man, it has yes, to be. It has, it has to be. be. It has, like, they know. They know. They got to go back yeah. to work, and they have to come up with the. A whole different game plan for a la Lacran, and I can't Completely. wait for that. It's going to be exciting. They're going to get the right sparring. Hopefully, they're going to get the right people that hopefully. kind of have the same style of Verchelt. They're going to get. They're <laughs> going to get. Spark they're going to get sparring guys. They're going to get some of them people to get get yeah. him up where he needs to be. Yeah. I, I the only concern right now is, uh, you know, is everything going to shut down again? 
you know, um, how safe it's, you know, all these gyms that are starting to open back and forth again. So that's I, the question. I, I he's going to have the right training to get there. He needs more than just a regular, no, he needs you know, a successful camp. training camp. He needs, he needs a, intense exactly. sparring. Great sparring. He needs a yeah. great game plan. Bear Creek, get out of the way, go somewhere else. You know, like Shea Mosley, they part of ways. And, yeah. Absolutely. So that's the thing. Like, so we're saying perfect world scenario, right? So I guess first to you, uh, Hopper, and then to Manny, what can he do? I mean, maybe I'm being too negative here, but like, just honestly, like right now, like if anyone knows so called you, which would please do, uh, and called it like, hey, Hopper, what do you think I should do to win this fight? I mean, what can he do? Are the tools even there? I'm not even no, trying to are. hate, Of man. course they are. Oscar Valdez, two-time Olympian. Uh, he's got the pedigree. He's got the skills. He, he, he gets a bad rap for his defense, but... Uh, because he's so because he's short and he has to he has to take more risks. Um, if 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 Reynoso was to call me right now, back to your question, I would tell him, "Hey, get ready, get ready, get ready to unload from the opening bell because this guy's gonna come after you. Uh, be ready to counter. Yeah, be ready, definitely be ready to counter, and be ready to uh, establish the jab. His jab wasn't very." He, was, he seemed, he seemed he very, he seemed very he hasn't content with throwing power jab. punches. He, if he doesn't, if he doesn't focus on his jab against Berchet, exactly. it's going to be a very short fight for it. it can and it, and it can go either way. Maybe Berchet gets knocked out. Um, so I, I would tell him, hey, I would train him for the knockout because mm. it's going, it's going to be a firefight. It's not going to be a thinking man's fight. No it's chess not, match. It's not going to be a chess match. It's mm. not going to be. Burchett is not going to let uh, Valdez think the way Velez was letting him think. Negative. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it's, he's going to be putting the pressure on him. Get ready. Oh, wow. I love that. Manny. Hmm. For me, he's got to start more explosive. And the way he's got to do it with the jab, just Hopper said it. Um, he's a slow starter. There's no doubt. This is, this is the fourth fight that I've seen him, him just start very slow in the first couple of rounds. And, you know, it almost cost him. Against Lopez, right, and it, honestly, to be honest, it, it could have ca- ca- cost him in this fight. No, so, yeah, it's true. So he needs to be more aggressive at the beginning, set himself with that jab, double jab, um, utilize that you know right hand at times that he's very powerful with, and um, you know you have to have the stamina. I think you have to bulk up a little bit and get a little bit more stronger. You're not a featherweight anymore. All right, you, you you're super featherweight going into the junior lightweight. I mean, you know, 130 pounds. That's 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 pretty tough for these guys that been there. And Burchelt clearly could be a lightweight. Yeah. So no. you're you you're going to be boxing about someone that's already establishes himself in the division, mm-hmm. and you're just jumping up there and fighting for the second time, and the third time will be a the number one guy in the. <laughs> The super featherweight, yeah, one of the hey, top guys in I, you the know, division. it's going to be very tough. I, I am leaning right now towards the Lalacran, but I do look forward to follow uh, Oscar Valdez to see how, how he's going to end up be and then see if he do, he's going to look. He looked great in this fight, but he doesn't look as strong yeah. to be able to compete no, with um, Burchelt. I, I agree. And I think, as far as I don't want to go as far as, you know, say legacy fight, but I think as far as cementing the, the abilities of Eddie Reynoso as a trainer, oh, too. He, that's he a can, plus. If he gets this win, to me, hmm. he is the man. He already has the stable, but if he's able to uh, take some of the things you said, and I, I agree, by the way, which scares me, that I think he does have to fight fire <laughs> with fire. Yeah. I think if he goes in there with anything that resembled what he did the, the other night. Man's plan. Yeah, nope. trying to go in there, chess match, peekaboo. He's going to be peekaboo yeah. coming off the ground. Yep. <laughs> um, you know, So he's not going to have that luxury. He has mm-hmm. to have uh, his peak performance. He has to have his uh, jab in full effect. And then sticking that jab out there, too, to get full extension out there to kind of yeah. measure that distance. Because sometimes people just kind of stick it out there, you know, just for the yeah, sake. Yeah, different kind of jabs, feeler jabs, power yeah. jabs, stick jabs, you know, just. Yeah, but he, I think he needs to make sure to have that real clear definitive jab so he can come back over with that, you know, that left and, you know, really kind of get that measured distance. But yeah. it's going to be an offensive for however long it lasts. Yeah, yeah. It, it does. Speaking of uh, offensive fighters. Oh, about man. the Coleman event. Wow. So <laughs> even though our man Edgar Manny didn't Balanga. get the victory for the main event, that Coleman I got one. I knew it. I, I've already put <laughs> one of them is there. The boy from Brooklyn. <laughs> wow. What are we going to be over wow. Brooklyn? 14 got straight. The streak continues. 14 yeah. first round knockouts. And the thing about it is, see, this is one of those moments in a fighter's career. And we were talking about this about, you know, we're defining casuals and so on. This is a fight 
that just gets overlooked. And a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, who was he fighting? Oh, well, Eric Moon, um, Berlanga was familiar with him. And he said it post-fight in the interview. He was in the amateurs with him. He was in the Olympic scene with them. Right. He knew who he was. Right. Uh, so he trained uh, hard yeah. because he knew who he was. Eric Moon was 11-2 and two going into the fight. Uh, he had the Olympic pedigree. And uh, Berlanga knew who he was. And he finished him in one round. Yeah. One round. He yeah. liked he liked hanging on the ropes. Yeah, and you know, uh, rope burn. Rope, rope burn was a nickname because Tim, nickname. Tim Bradley. <laughs> Shout and, out to Tim Bradley for the gold. That was actually one of Tim Bradley's better better performances. Better him and Andre Ward, they were on point. They were oh, yeah. on. I know point. people usually don't say that, and we'll probably get yeah. you know flame for it. But hey, you got to call him like to see him, and they were on point. They were on point. All of their call outs. There's a particular moment where Andre Ward basically said. He told Tim Bradley, I wouldn't want you as my trainer. You don't even let, <laughs> you don't even let the boxers uh, 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 feel the round. Uh, you're already wanting a, a jab. It's barely a minute into the fight, Jim. <laughs> yeah. No, and he, he definitely called it. He called the, him out. The thing but that stood out to me is... 14 straight. Is, um, yeah, obviously the, the fact that Moon did have a game plan. And mm-hmm. he shared it from the fighter meeting that you know Tim Bradley was saying. And that's, to me, the reality. Come at him. Everybody has and a he game did. plan until they get hit in the face. Like He wanted to turn into uh, Hagler Hearns. And man, he, he felt that power, and he wanted no he part of it. Went down, and he he did. Uh, he said he was gonna come right at him as soon as the bell rang, and he did. He did. His credit. Did. That's that's him. And he went right back. He went. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the other guy threw right back, and yeah. the other guy, the er, Edgar Berlanga, the chosen one. And then uh, don't sleep on him too, because a lot of people's like, well, that's uh, we trying to see a, a you know another Deontay Wilder in the super middleweights, you know, just on one punch knockout artist. Well, I mean, no. The guy can box. A lot of people don't know that. They haven't seen him, but look at the amateurs. Yeah, even he was a with boxer. the he was not not a knockout artist. That just got developed, and the, it's just still a kid still. So wait until he gets strong, stronger. Um, he's gonna have some challenges. I mean, there's gonna be some yeah. fights. He's not gonna knock out everyone completely. I mean, he'll probably. <coughs> how long do you think this streak is gonna continue? Um, it also depends to, on the on the on the opponent. Well. To match making twenty one for sure. But I have to say that yeah, <laughs> least, I know at least a couple of more. I, yeah. I, I I can't wait, and I know I'm sure a lot of fans are are wanting more of him. But you know, hey, that's what's gonna sell. Um, he's gonna be a superstar, and I have to say, middleweights, be aware, because <clears throat> the king is there. He's a chosen one, and. He's That's coming. why he's still number one prospect in my <laughs> list, which he will be removed soon because he'll be a contender. Mm, anytime contender. soon. Contender. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, mean, if you look at the, the 168 scene right now, uh, Daniel Jacobs, Billy Joe Saunders, David Lemieux, Callum Smith, even Canelo can get, it, get in there. Um, Kayla Plant, he, right? He guys may, on the way he out. May, he may yeah. probably fight Canelo like way, way when <laughs> Canelo is, is almost out the exit door, to be honest. But yeah. I, I think he can definitely take some of these guys um, Caleb Plant, that that would be someone. Um, Billy Joe Saunders, I think that's one of the best matches, especially in the WBO. You so. think he's ready for a, 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 uh, a not, high caliber? Level not at the moment, but like I that? I think he's probably ready for a top fifteen. Um, you know, so um, like a rank guy, a rank guy. I mean, fourteen and zero. And no, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not you know, questioning that. Maybe so somebody like uh, you, you start David seeing, Lemieux. Oh, that'd be fantastic. David Lemieux could be a good one. And you said William that Monroe Jr. Right. And yeah. I remember that Hopper said that during our, our prospect show that we did. You know, when we did top five uh, Puerto Rican prospects. Berlanga. What did we I, did. Oh, I had him number one. You did. Yeah, you and guys I, were hating on him. We, big right. time. But uh, <laughs> I remember we were actually hating more on that potential fight. But actually, man, that aged well. I think that'd be a perfect fight. Yeah. I, I do. Yeah. I mean, I'm not because I don't think that. he's ready yet for even Daniel Jacobs. No, no, I think no, 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 so, no not yet. I think Daniel Jacobs will take him to school. Well, yeah, because I think he's if he doesn't yeah, get yeah, caught, but I think Daniel but, at that level, that's it's. I think uh, Berlanga Jacobs will give him looks that he hasn't seen. Oh, right now, Jacobs thirty six and three, or he's. Uh, yeah, I he's think people fought. forget how well he can box. Yes, but he's still, he's still, I mean, he's down out he's of his prime, but he's great. still, he's still no, can box. He's a great, and I think he'll be a step in some smart these guys. I that think we're starting to come up. Yeah, maybe some. I think. I think. See those fights right there, like Willie Monroe or uh, Willie Nelson. The German Willie Monroe, Jürgen, Willie Nelson, Jurgen, uh, Jurgen Bergen, Bergen, the uh, uh, Brad sh- Hammer. Shooting off. He's ranked number eleven. Uh, just that's the German uh, Jurgen. Well, that's Brain Hammer. That's, that's the thing. So even Darrell, but Darrell's over there in the PBC. Yeah. So Manny, you'd want to uh-huh. give him somebody ranked, even though um the chosen one at the end. I wish I was surprised. You know. Um, he was, you know, doing push-ups in the ring. He's obviously very focused. Yeah, Steven uh, you know, Rogier has him, big. you know, really ready for ready. the next level. 
um, he was saying that he's not in a rush. That, that kind of kind of surprised me because you know when you're in the rush, that means you're going to get those bigger paydays. But I think I mean I guess he's looking at the long. He term. must be getting he's paid. Time, he yeah, he's getting, getting he's getting pretty of, decent yeah. money right now. He knows Is the Caleb caliber. Caleb Truex of, top rank. Caleb Truex. No, have, I think or PBC. I think, PBC. He might, I think he might be PBC, but hey, John Ryder. Yeah. Man, that'd he's, be, that'd be I mean, a, his time will come. I think his time will I think come. They're I gonna, think they're moving him along. Yeah, just, they're moving him the along right where they need to be, but you start seeing the caliber of opponents right when you get to that Rise. 14, 15, 16 mm-hmm. fights. I would say he'll oh, probably well, fight someone. He has and to then, get ranked, too. I mean, I don't see... And, not, I mean, with one fight, yet. with one fight, with with every fight being in the first round, the guy can be ready, I mean, you know, next week, which That's we're going to talk about someone that mm-hmm. had a knockdown. He's about to fight in August now, so... yeah. No, 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 definitely. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's another good thing. Like, so not just for the card guys, but just kind of like in general, I would have kind of looked back in far as the things that kind of stood out, pros, cons. I mean, we were blessed to have Orlando Cupo Gonzalez on here. Absolutely. And uh, he out. talked about his experience. Shout out to him. And, uh, you know, I said when it first started, I'm excited, but I was apprehensive. You know, what what are we going to get? Now, mm-hmm. I know there's been a lot of naysayers as far as obviously the, you know, the ratings have been, you know, not necessarily what they'd like to yeah. be at. And uh, there's been kind of hit <clears throat> or miss. And then also, too, there's been as far as just questions on the protocol because they had to, you know, reschedule, or in some case, cancel fights. Right. In the case of, um, you know, Herring and um, uh, Okendo. Okendo, yeah. So they they tried to, to do that fight, but, you know, it just wouldn't happen. So in, in those situations, um, I guess, Hopper, you first. What's your overall opinion, man? Like, uh, do you feel like it was um, – you know, props to the top rank, or do you think like, man, that that really didn't satisfy your back your oh, boxing it, cravings? It, oh, I loved it. I loved every second of it. I watched every fight. I've watched. I I couldn't get enough of it. Maybe because I'm a I'm a boxing homer. Yes, I'm a boxing apologist, but I I enjoyed all of it. The best card to me, in my opinion, was this past one, July 21st, is the Oscar Valdez and yeah. Jason Velez main yeah. event, Berlanga and the co main event. You had the nurse, uh, Kim Clavel. Kim Clavel. She she came Amazing. out and just this. Dominated Natalie Gonzalez. You also had Elvis Rodriguez with another knockout. Dominican. Uh, Dominican. In the house. Comes out yeah. With the he's Elvis. not getting enough from oh, He's get. He. He. he yeah, will. Apparently, he will. he'll be fighting again sometime in August. Mm-hmm. And then so. you opened it up with Isaac Doug Doug Bay. Oh Doug my Bay. goodness, he got. Now back. he was using his jab. He was using. No, his, he's he was using a whole his different jab. Doug Bay, to be honest. Yeah. A and whole he's different coming one. back from the battering that really. he took from my boy Vaquero Navarrete. Yeah. So I, overall, I think that was the best card. Um, the worst card. And it was one that we saw here was the Carlos Tacan versus Jerry yeah. Forrest. Yeah. And it's a, a, a little bit unfair because that's the one that were Big Baby tested positive again. Mm, poor time. Uh, the, I guess the, the the only highlight of that entire fight card was the double knockdown. The rare the double, double knockdown. knockdown. Remember, we were here. Corey, still we were here. here. <laughs> we were watching Corey, hey, look, double knockdown. Corey Champion and Peter Cortez. <laughs> yep. uh, that was the yep. double knock. They both dropped each other. <laughs> yeah. That's the highlight of the, of the fight. No, but you yeah. also had... Um, you had some some great, so uh, some people that that put themselves on the map. Like uh, I overall, I consider it a success. You got backs in box back, back on TV. Top yeah. Frank was the uh, willing to take the initiative to get it out there. There's a lot of uh, bumps on the road. Hopefully, other promoters take note. PBC, you're up next. Golden Boy does uh, Dazen Matchroom with Eddie Hearn. You guys hopefully take some notes from what Top Rank, some of the errors that they did. And uh, they got the got the boxers uh, much needed fights. Stayed active. Navarrete and Berche were in showcase fight. We got solid main events, upsets like Plane over Greer, yeah. Franco, Franco over Maloney, Franco. Luis Alberto Franco. Lopez over Andy Vincent. Uh, new names appeared like Clashes K Collar, <laughs> who's becoming somewhat of a, he's becoming oh, a he's, huge, yes, big time. <laughs> Nobody wants Elvis, that guy. Elvis man. Rodriguez, uh, with yeah. his uh, two fights prior, he scored a knockout with a jab. Even our own Capu Gonzalez or Capu Capu Gonzalez, de Oro yeah. Gonzalez had a tremendous supernova. Uh, Exciting Luis prospects. Poroso. They continue to shine. Edgar Berlanga, Robert Ramirez, Wiley veterans inching closer to title shots like Jesse Magdaleno, Jose mm. Pedraza, Jose Separa. New blood in the heavyweight scene with Jared, the real big baby Anderson. He scored a few knockouts. A lot of Puerto Ricans staying busy. Abraham Nova. Indeed. Josue Vargas, our boy Capu, and that dude. Felix. El Diamante. El Diamante. Verdejo. That was, Verdejo. That was an exciting that card. That was a very good card. Yeah. I think that's the second uh, had the most <coughs> viewers in there. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it did. It looked phenomenal. And, and that's, that, again, really, that's just really like I mentioned with good. Edgar Berlanga. 
Yes. Uh, this is one of those moments, and you know, Verda, Will Madera was. Uh, I didn't. I was surprised. I did not expect Verdejo to go in there and handle him like he did. I was expecting a, a tough, a tougher fight, and uh, Verdejo had other plans. He's see, that's that's kind of the funny thing, man. And I'm glad you said that. And it's funny how in, in boxing fans were just never satisfied. We're like that beast that just never, uh, you know, satisfies that hunger for just more. I guess because to me. Going into it, I thought the fight was going to be a fight. You know, and I even said yeah. that, like, you know, his opponent is no joke. Is no no joke at all. So I was totally impressed by the way he came out. He's talking about Verdejo yeah. and how he was able to control and just take him out so quickly. And then, of course, never fails. You know, I'm hearing, you know, social media, of course, uh, just kind of questioning the, the opponent, you know. And, um, cool. yeah, I'm like, what casual. Do casual. <laughs> what do you want? Wait. Like, he was... He was a quality he opponent, an undefeated he fighter, did. and I think everyone forgot about the uh, the punching power of Verdejo. You know, he's got, including this last week, he's seventeen got amazing knockouts. Footwork. He's got amazing. Um, footwork that, uh, the problem was, was the, his mind but wasn't in the game. You know, when it, when he needed to be. But I think now, you know, with the addition of Ismael Salas, and hopefully he got a wake up. You know, he's got he's yeah. got a one last opportunity that. You when did you see Verdejo even coming in his social media? Never. Now no. he's got the confidence to say, "Listen, I know my talent. I just in I, I my mind is straight right now. Be aware, and I'm gonna tell people right now that I am that guy that they thought he was." And That's he a great is. point. So when you when you saw the fight, Manny, what what went through your mind? Obviously, you were excited as hell, and I, I know you were going crazy. Uh, but I'm saying as far as <laughs> I did it feel you like you were is it new improved Verdejo or do you feel like it was a flashback or you feel like it was a lightning in a bottle or just like is it a anomaly uh, or kind of a combination or you didn't know yeah. what to feel because you didn't know what to expect it. Well a couple of things I wanted to see Verdejo. Uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to see that but if you look at Verdejo's past fights um, he'd average around 23 to 38 um, percent when, when it comes to landing punches. Um, Verdejo, when he feels he's got the opponent set and go, he throws a lot of wall punches and he misses. <laughs> of course, it was sure. one round at 47%. And you still saw a couple of punches that they were just whack punches. If you got him, you got him. But I think he needs to really study his opponent. He's got the power. He's big. He's strong. Um, I want to see more accuracy in the punches because you're not going to knock out everyone from now on. It'll be very difficult to say, I'm going to knock this guy out if you're going to start contending now for a world title. But if we see that Verdejo and he stays smart in the ring, and outside the ring he is, and he proved it, we're going to see a lot of great fights from him. Um, <coughs> what? He want, he's, he's already calling out... Uh, well, he, I know he's calling out Teofimo Lopez. He wants to you know, avenge that, that loss in the, in the Olympics. Um, it'll be a while before he gets there. I don't think that, that he is actually ready right now. Yeah. I don't think he is ready right now, but what I do know is he's ready to fight someone that possibly was a former champion. That's how you prove yourself, okay? You, you know, a lot of people are saying, but we don't know, you know, the haters or, you know, people that don't know about boxing. Oh, he just knocked them out. The guy wasn't good. But before that, he's a bomb. They were giving <laughs> they will give him will <laughs> an opportunity to possibly beat. I thought he had a great chance myself. And I did too, based on his records and the things and you've that seen I've him seen fight. from I've him. Seen him fight on box and- Absolutely, I, I I said this is going to be uh, another step for Verdejo that he needs to take Honestly, full advantage, which he did, and he ended. I told you guys, I said six rounds. I never expected him to come back that strong. I was looking forward to see him be more accurate with the punches. And you know he just he demonstrated this power. What can go? What what could be next for Verdejo? Why don't you fight a former champion? For me, the best matchup, and I know there's a lot of social there's media a, rumors, you know, heading in Puerto Rico that he could potentially fight former champion Machado. I, I I don't see that happen. Puerto Rican Puerto Rican. Machado's kind of lower on the weight classes, isn't he? he no, he's 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 at the one thirty one thirty one thirty five, and then Verdejo forty seven one thirty five. Thirty-five. Oh, he's in one thirty-five. One thirty-five. Well? Mm-hmm. Um, but I think right now, um, if you want to prove yourself, prove it with a former world champion. My best matchup will be former IBF world champion, Richard Kami. Richard Kami. If you look at right now where Verdejo is on the rankings, he had moved up into the seventh spot, and I'm not counting that the number one and the number two 
are vacant right now. Okay, you got George Cambosos that's got to fight against Lee Selsby. And none of these other guys, which with no, no disrespect to anyone, but if top rank is moving the needle to get big, huge pay-per-view fights like they expected when they signed them, they're going to probably go after some opponent that maybe was a world champion or even maybe the winner of Cambosos Lee Selsby that could potentially get them into the number one spot. And now I get an opportunity to fight the winner of Teofimo and Lomachenko. I mean, they're a unique situation because, I mean, I honestly, I know they, because the way it worked out because of the COVID-19 and the, the fight rescheduling, he got moved to the main event. And I was actually concerned about that because he's put back into the spotlight. How's he going to react? I, I think he, he demonstrated he, uh, he a main event caliber. Absolutely. And he rewarded them with, you know, great, you know, the better ratings than they would have saw before. So that, that all being said, though, um, <laughs> you know, are they thinking like, Man, we got to strike when the iron's hot. We're just gonna throw him in there. We don't give a damn if he's ready or not. Because <laughs> they're thinking like cashing man, out already. Yeah, because I'm thinking like we're way past. You know, I just want to know what their mindset is. I mean, I know from your perspective. You're hey, that's like, my perspective. I mean, you, you know, know and right. I, yeah, I, I yeah. love that. But I'm thinking yeah. like, are they thinking like, man, we got lucky here. We need to make this happen again. And they'll throw in there before he's ready, or they're gonna like kind of let this marinate. Um, I, I I think there's one more fight. I I'm I'm pretty sure um, there is one more fight. Um, with, you know, one of those guys that are out there. Um, I don't know if he's going to be moving to a different organization and maybe fight some other guys um, different than what, you know, he's got in the IBF. Um, I mean... Because the WBO I, has him ranked number 13 and the WBC has him ranked number 15. 15 correct. So, but, I mean, see, but the, w, yeah. the, 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 the IBF w, has the IBF, nine. It, the nine, but one and two are gone. They're vacant. Oh, that's right. So that makes them seven, Right. So he has to fight someone. So he's got to fight someone from there. Um, or maybe if he jumps somewhere else, um, that could go maybe with the WBO. And, you know, Lee Selsby is still, still there. Um, maybe Jorge Linares. You, mm. you know the guy that I would like oh, to see? Or the winner, Fortuna, Fortuna and Linares, the winner yeah. could actually potentially maybe be a good matchup Emmanuel to, 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 to see if he can actually demonstrate himself. Another former world champion. That, I, I think that's how you set yourself to prove yourself and stay, you know plant your flag. Yeah. I've think- been the best. I got me in my career went sideways. I you know took ownership. I'm back on track. Couple of fights, looking better Man. and better. Let's see that'll be what a, I can do with a former champion. Fantastic match of Jorge Linares. Absolutely. Videjo. I'm not sure. Gold, do you think Golden Boy will be up for that one? Or maybe they're still I mean, they, they, they Golden Boy right? in, in, in top ranks can probably. That's, bring, that's the yeah. thing though. Like to, to what you're saying, I think um, I think everybody realizes. I don't know if he's because there's the haters want to see him, but Verdejo's he's he's money, man. Mm-hmm. So like he's gonna get eyes on your fighter. But and do, do, you, do guys, you think that you can add to the mix because he is a superstar? And do you think that he should be considered to be in the action against Ryan Garcia? Um, you know, Javante Davis, which he'll be fighting Neil Santa Cruz. Um I, uh I think uh, his name will be thrown Devin out there Haney. because Devin right now he's he's a name and he's a recognizable name because he's been in the mix as far as name wise. Since 2013, but that that's a good point. But would you, if you are top ranks, if I'm if I'm top knowing, ranked, would I, you do that right now or wait to see that he can continue to improve with Ismael Salas? If I'm if I'm top rank, I, I would have him against um, another rank guy before I put him against one of the top elite guys. Because, like to your point, um, let's say that he fights one of those you know other rank guys and he, he doesn't have that same success or he even loses, you know, but he still has a you know, respectable performance. Right. You could still reestablish, you know, get him back on track and then build him back up again. You know, like, oh, that was too soon yeah. and we're okay, but we can kind of reassess All right. and well, get him back on track. You guys have your promoter's hat on. I'll put on my fan hat <laughs> Bring on. it. Bring the fan put perspective. Put him on there already. Oh! Love it. We are fans and people. I want to see what he's got. Throw him in there with Devin Haney. Really? Throw him in there with... Uh, now, where Luke Campbell's going to be hopefully finding Ryan, Ryan Garcia. Uh, throw him in there with all these guys already. I want to see. I want to. I want to see what. Do he you has, think man. in your he, eyes? He's as a not fan, a. He's not he a ready? young prospect is he ready? anymore. No. He, he's 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 got his stripes in the game. He's been in there for a while already. Let's uh, go. Let's 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 make a make a make. Top rank can do it. Top rank can can pull pull some strings. Get him up there. 
Oh, Vasilya Machenko and uh, Teofimo are probably going to fight win in September, right? Right. Yeah. Put Verdejo on the on, on the on the undercard. I, I think that's a up. done deal. It's a I, done deal. I, He's going to be on there. Yeah. Yes. Do you know how like they, how they like to do it with the future opponents stacking yeah. them up on different fights on the same card? I could see him being um, fight another ranked guy because he would be on there with the IBF rank number ten winner yeah. fights. The, he fights the like winner. Like an eliminator, of, right? Yeah. yeah. He so fights can... the winner of Teofimo Vas- uh, Vasili. Uh, Verdejo will be waiting in the wings if 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 the Maybe mandatory is the mandatory is and, and that'll be good. Uh, the reason why I started with Ichi Kami, I believe he's still with Ludibella Entertainment. Not sure, but the reason why I named him is because he wants to revive his career after that devastating loss. That's a loss great matchup. I see you got your against, matchmaker hat on. Yeah, you got absolutely. your promoters hat on. I've got absolutely. the fan hat on. I want but to as see a fan it. perspective, that's that's <laughs> how I'm looking at it and uh, as knowing that possibilities to get him in track That'd or somewhere. That's a great fight. So that's, that's what I was brainstorming and thinking, okay, what Is that could, good enough to be the co-main event? That will be fantastic. Verdejo Imagine and call me. Mm. Yeah, seriously. Either Verdejo, Comey, or Fortuna no, be, and, that, and Linares. That'd be great, event, because Comey lost to Teofimo. Yeah. Exactly. So and, 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 if you can't get past Comey, don't you, you don't deserve to you get past Exactly. Teofimo. He's the Teofimo. ultimate gatekeeper. Match Baker, and top ranks. Comey wins. He puts himself back in uh, in mandatory position. He'll probably won't. He, yeah, but he'll probably won't get Teofimo because I think Teofimo will probably go to bigger things and un, uh, unification, undisputed. Oh, eventually he'll probably he might end up move up to, to the he's junior big, welter. He's Absolutely, big boy. that's See, what that's, I'm saying. There he's got rumors that he struggles and doesn't play. have a lot of time here. No, in, that's, in, that's, in, that's, in, that's, in, that's a great weight. point. Um, before we get off Verdejo, like we just said, because the possibility of both, um, you know, uh, Lomachenko and Timofimo both vacating. So yeah, you need to go ahead and get Verdejo and you know put him out in the forefront. Yeah. Well, the Vasily is the franchise champion in the WBC. Stupid ass, but but anyways, um, I digress. Hater, I'm a hater. <laughs> but yeah, I mean overall, I loved the action from Top Rank. I loved it. Yeah, it, it was. We put a ball on this uh, episode. No, I, I, I actually, else? I'm gonna miss it because, like, every Tuesday and Thursdays, I'm like, oh my god, you know, what, if I, we don't have podcasts yeah. or not. I got something to do. I get off work. We get off work. I grill busy Tuesday. day at work, and I'm already, you know, thinking ahead that at least I'm gonna have a couple hours that I'm gonna enjoy at least what the I like boxing. through the weekends. Mm. And then the thing about it was consistent. You knew that it was going to happen. I think they should do this more. They should bring in the fall series now, and then this should be the br- winter series. Or hey, like you mentioned, um, you know, the zone, uh, matchroom, uh, PBC. Hey, listen, look what they've done. They could create something like that. I know we're going to talk about next episode about the Showtime card, which finally. But if you can get the fans to really learn your pool of prospects and see them, I can guarantee you the casuals we talked about. They know what's going to come. And then when that time comes in, oh, I remember, yeah, through the pandemic, I watched those guys. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they're, you know what I mean? So these are some of the things that the fans want to see. They want to see consistency. They want to see, you know, that, that novella, that soap opera, the, 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 the trash talking, the, 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 whatever it is, you know, the, the speculation. The, are, are they going to fight? Are they going to be COVID? You know what I mean? So we're going to have a pandemic for a while. Sad enough, we are. But the reality is if you can entertain your, your fans – the way they did, top rank did. Oh my God, I can't believe. Look at UFC. Yeah. Shout out to top rank. Yep. And vivo. Vivo. Episodio 49. Fuera. Adios.